Right. Okay, welcome um, this afternoon. Um, thank you for your interest in our institution, the Hochschule München, University of Applied Sciences here in Munich. Um, I will first give you a short um, history of facts and figures. Um, the university was founded in 1971, so it's about 50 years old. It's not one of the old traditional institutions, but a bit more of a young institution. Um, we're the biggest university of applied sciences in Bavaria with about 18,000 students, but that sounds a lot, but compared to the big universities in Munich, Technical University and Ludwig Maximilian, um, with about 40,000 or 50,000 students, that's not too much. Um, we offer more than 40 bachelor degree courses and more than 40 master degree courses as well. And our 18,000 students are taught by about 500 professors and about 750 associate lecturers. An associate lecturer is someone who is not a professor at our university, but who is working in a normal company and who is only doing one or two seminars for us. And that's one of the important parts of University of Applied Sciences, that we try to get as much of practical experience as possible to our students, also with our associate lecturers who come directly from the practical work in their area. Where are we located in Munich? Um, we have three um, places in Munich, two really in the very center, one in a bit outside, but also very well reachable by public transport. So there's three different um, main areas that you might be studying if you are a student here. Um, for those of you who have not uh, been listening to a University of Applied Sciences, some differences um, to a research university, the proper universities. One is that we have small groups and very structured schedules. So especially in the first three or four semesters of your bachelor degree, you will be in a group with about 30 or 40 other students and you will all follow the same schedule. On average, you have about six modules, so six seminars every semester. You go to those lectures and then at the end of the seminar, you write an exam about this lecture. Then you have your term break and then it's back to the next semester with the next schedule again. Um, and we try to always put the same people in the same study groups so it's easier to get to know other students. So that's one part, small groups and very structured approach to schedules. Only in the higher semesters um, do you have um, a broader choice of subjects you can do for using um, for specialization. Um, you also have practical tutorials, of, not from the very first semester, but as soon as possible. And you even have one whole term, one practical semester where you are not here at our university, but where you are working in a company and which is a mandatory part of your degree. Um, also, we have um, a career center that offers many um, seminars uh, on soft skills and um, other career choices where you can um, get help about that. And we have a whole department for electro elective courses for general studies. Every student has to choose two elective courses that are not directly connected to their um, study course because we, had, we want you to broaden your mind outside of your um, field of study. So if you're doing an engineering course, you can still do another language or some uh, seminars on politics, on uh, philosophy or geography or other ideas. Um, and again, two of those elective courses are mandatory. So this is what our degrees uh, look like, um, seven semesters, because you have foundation studies, which is usually the first four or five semesters. Then you have one practical term. And after that, you have two or three semesters where you can choose specialized modules and where in the end you write your thesis. So at the University of Applied Sciences, you will do seven semesters. At a research university, you study six semesters because they don't have the practical term. For those of you who might already have finished a bachelor and are interested in a master degree course, those usually have four semesters then, two basic theoretical semesters. If your university degree does not include a practical term, so if you only studied six semesters, three years, then you usually have to do one practical term as part of your master. And then in the fourth semester, you will write your master thesis and can choose specialized modules. 
Another difference regarding universities of applied sciences and research universities is the choice of courses. What can you study here? And the main difference is that degrees like medicine and law, or if you want to become a teacher, you cannot study here. For those, you have to go to a university. However, we still think we have a nice choice of subjects available. Our focus is on the engineering department. Um, as you can see, more than 65% of our degrees are from the engineering area. We have a very strong department on business. So it's roughly 20% of the um, course offers. Also a large um, department for social studies, applied social studies, and a rather small, but we think very distinguished department for studies of design. Now let's have a quick look um, at the courses that we offer. I can't go into every detail, but just to give you an overview of what you can study here. Um, first, we have construction science. So it's the usual degrees like architecture, civil engineering or facility management. That's a picture of our architecture department here. And we have a good choice of general engineering courses. So for everyone who is interested in a degree in engineering, but who's not quite sure about a um, specialization yet, they can choose one of those very broad um, degree courses like mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. Those degrees will give you a very broad um, knowledge about your subject but no very strong specialization. So you can then choose a specialized subject in your master degree or during your practical term. So those and mechatronics, again, it's a very broad degree with um, computer science, electrical and mechanical engineering combined. So these degree courses are the, the classical general engineering degrees um, that we offer. If someone says I'm an engineer in Germany, he usually has done mechanical or electrical engineering. However, if you already have a special interest in a certain area of engineering, then we have a few, um, a few specialized degree courses at the um, bachelor level already. So if you're interested in electrical engineering, but you think, oh, regenerative energy is the future, then you can study this from the bachelor already. You will do the first two semesters in general electrical engineering and then specialize in solar and wind energy. Or if you are interested in mechanical engineering, but really all you really want to do is build cars and uh, motorbikes, then you can do automotive engineering from the start. Um, we have some other rather specialized um, bachelor degrees, print media technology and paper technology, and also um, a whole of three degrees in geoinformatics geo and satellite navigation. So all the geoinformatics science also very very interesting study programs um, that are already specialized in the bachelor. But we have to say also for these graduates, um, the job market in Germany is very good because those specialized people are needed as well. For those of you who have an interest, a broader interest and say engineering, yeah, that's all right, but I, I want something more to go with it. We have quite a few courses combining engineering and science biological engineering or chemical engineering. We have combination courses from engineering and business studies and from engineering and compu uh, communication. Also, computer science and design can be combined or computational engineering. So also those interdisciplinary courses are on offer. And of course, those are very well thought after those graduates because you know having people who have a very good knowledge in both areas engineering and science, engineering and business are well thought after. Right. Um, to give you an idea um, how your study course would look, what your study course would look like, I brought industrial engineering. So the first two semesters are in the basics, of course, that's math, physics, chemistry, uh, material science, technical mechanics and some basics in business administration. In this degree, you can already choose a specialization starting in the third semester for three semesters, and then you have to practical term in the sixth, and then in the seventh, you do your, uh, your master thesis. Uh, most engineering subjects are built up in the same or a similar way. So basics, 
then you can choose already a study area, you have a practical term, and then you can do more specialization and your bachelor thesis at the end. Um, so that's it about the engineering degrees. As I said, those are the main parts of our degree courses are focusing on the engineering or technology. But we already uh, we also have a very large department on business studies. Even if we only have two <laughs> degrees on offer in those, um, they are amongst um, the largest degree courses we have. That's business administration and tourism management. Again, business and engineering can be combined um, into different um, degree courses. So what do you do in the business administration course? It's the basics in the first three semesters. That's, of course, accounting. Um, but don't underestimate the amount of business mathematics you will do, statistics, stochastic, modeling, information systems. It's all part in your first three semesters. But of course, you have introduction to business administration, economics, um, human resources, business law, and taxes. So the first three semesters will give you a very broad and general idea of business administration and how things are done in Germany, especially things like taxes, business law are, of course, um, very country specific. And you will get here an idea of the German um, tax laws and business laws. Um, you also will have uh, two modules, at least, in business communication, which will be done in English. I'm talking about the language requirements later. And the fourth semester here is a practical semester, and then you can use uh, you can do a specialization afterwards. Um, right now, they have about um, 15 or 17 different um, special areas you can choose. You do one every semester. Um, you can choose same subject one and two in each semester. So there's a broad choice then in the higher semesters. Um, and of course, then you're doing a, a thesis in one of your specialization areas as well in the end. If you want to do a master in business administration, we have one master in business, but it offers six study areas. Uh, you have to choose your study area with your application. And one of these digital, digital technology management is also offered in English. So there's um, master level, there's a broader choice of English degrees. Right. Um, tourism management, going back to here, tourism management is very similar in, in the basics. You're also doing a lot of accounting. Those basics are just part of a, any business degree. But um, you also have a focus on the business um, on business administration within the tourism sector, of course, and you will be doing one foreign language from the start. That's usually French or Spanish. And of course, your specialization areas then in the higher semester and the fifth and seventh semester will be um, from the area of tourism management. So those will be a bit different from the ones you find in business administration. Now we can go on to our... Um, degrees in applied social science. We have social work, management and social innovation and nursing. Um, for those degrees, so social work qualifies you for working with people um, in, in whatever situations. Usually it's in consulting and advisory services. And management and social innovation is more in the area of administration and change management. Um, so it's more in the theoretical areas where social work really qualifies you for working with people. Um, here, having a look at the course structure. You are now already familiar with the seven semesters um, and the first four semesters are the basics in the four areas of organization. So how is social work organized in Germany, backgrounds in social politics and social economic situation. You have an area from um, science, scientific background, theory and history, a bit of psychology, um, a bit of communication um, uh, science. We have one area about um, values and norms. So that's a little bit of law. You're doing um, some legal um, aspects here, like family law, foreigner law, working law. So that if you're later on in an um, area of consulting a family, then you have to know what legal, back, uh, what legal ground you're standing on. 
And in this degree, we really want to put a lot of focus on the professional working. So you will um, do a lot of group work with other students, preparing maybe some little units um, for a kindergarten or whatever, so that you will be working in the um, area of social work as soon as possible as part of your degree. Right now. And last but really not least, our um, lovely department for design. Uh, at the moment, you can do one bachelor in design um, with three study areas. And again, you have to um, apply for one study area with your application. So you can't just apply in general for design, but you have to apply for photo design or industrial design or communication design. And that's what you will follow during your degree. Um, if you look at the seven semesters and the first semester, you will still be all together. Um, you will be taught in, in theory of design and in basics, also in drawing or photography. So everyone will do some basics. But then as of the second semester, you will be in your study groups. And it uh, really is very practically focused from the beginning so that you will do your own projects. Um, you will sit exams, yes, but you will also do projects as exams. Um, so this is really focused on you, on getting you to be creative and designing from the very start. We also have one degree course, Informatics and Design, which is a combination from our Department of Design and the Department for Computer Science, where it's about, of course, media design and um, how do you design um, media in a good way, in a user-friendly way. So um, how can you get innovations into the uh, computer design? So those are our four large study areas, engineering, business administration, um, applied social sciences, and design. Um, Again, if you want to study degree courses in medicine or um, in law, you will have to um, go to one of the big universities without the tag Applied Sciences. Now, um, let me say a few words about the admission requirements and the application process. The first important step would be to get a pre-check of your um, Ukrainian certificates through Uni Assist. Union Assist is an independent organization and they do check foreign certificates for quite a few German univers universities. They do two things for us. They check if you have a university entrance qualification in Germany, so if you can start directly with your degree. And they translate your Ukrainian grade to an average grade according to the German system. Um, this is important for our um, study courses with um, restricted access as um, there's a limited number of study places and applicants with the best grades will be admitted. I'll come to that in a moment. Um, so this pre-check has to be completed before you can apply. It's unfortunately not possible to apply directly with your degrees as they are. Um, we receive many applications from more than 30 different countries and we just don't have the resources to check every um, foreign certificate ourselves. Um, so UniAssist issues um, a pre-check documentation um, where it states if you have university entrance qualification and your average grade, this takes about six to eight weeks and it costs 75 euro at the moment. So um, it has to be done before um, the application deadline for most courses. Um, so that would be quite um, in advance of the application time. Um, you receive this pre-check documentation and you can either apply to directly to Hochschule München if you have direct university qualification or you can register with this document with a student colleague in Coburg if you have to do the one-year foundation course first. Um, the um, reg registration is directly at Coburg and they will then invite you for an entrance exam um, which will test your German and usually your math uh, knowledge. Right, so the application, once we have, once we are through the um, Uni Assist, the application at Hochschule München is only possible through our website and during the application times only. Um, we'll come to those in a minute. Um, so if you don't get anything from this lecture apart from this um, important link, then I, I would be happy. So hm.edu slash bachelor minus Bewerbung is where you can find nearly all information and all the important links. So um, this is really the important um, link of today. 
then um, some information about pre-study practice and finally German language. Um, quite a few of our engineering degrees ask for a pre-study practice, like an internship that you have to complete before you start your studies. It's somewhere between four to 12 weeks, depending on the degree. Sometimes you can do um, the study practice after you started in your first um, semester break, but not with all of them. So that's quite um, individual of every bachelor degree. So please have a look at um, the website before you apply so that you know if you have to do the pre-study um, practice before that, if there is one at all, or if you can do it during your um, studies. Uh, quite a few of our master degrees uh, require four to six months of practical work after the first degree as well. So um, for some of them, uh, your bachelor degree alone will not be enough to get into a master. Okay, and finally, German language requirement. The language of teaching in our bachelor degrees and in quite a few of our master degrees is German. Um, and therefore, we require German language level for all, all our bachelor degrees of level C1 at the moment for your final enrollment. Um, this means that you can complete your application, the pre-check, UniAssist only checks your academic background, but not your language requirement. Um, so if you apply for the winter semester, application time is from May to mid-July, but you have until September to complete your C1 and then finish your enrollment. So, and that is the same for all bachelor courses at the moment. Some master degrees can be studied with level B2, or they have an aptitude test, which will be held in German. This is very individual. <laughs> Nearly every degree has its own, um, its own ideas. So it's best to check with them directly or just ask us if you know which master degree you're interested in. Um, I would recommend this link as well, hm.edu slash study minus minus HM for um, having a look at the different master or bachelor degrees and the requirements. Right, and finally, yes, the assignment of study places. Um, most of our course studies have restricted admission, which means we have a limited number of places and the applicants with the best grades will be admitted. Of those places that we offer, for example, in business administration, it's usually 200 places every semester. And of those, 5% of the study places are for non-EU members. So that's not that many, which means that usually for degrees like business administration or informatic computer science, you need a fairly good um, degree to get in. An entrance exam is only necessary for our degrees in architecture and in design and for the degree in informatics and design. And usually you have to hand in a portfolio and pass an entrance exam. And this aptitude test or entrance exam is usually divided in a practical part where have you, you have to design something on the spot and an interview where you have to present your portfolio and you know, answer questions about your motivation or why, why do you want to study here in Munich and why do you want to study this degree? So for about half an hour now, um, any more questions that you don't want to ask today or that are not answered today, you can, uh, of course, write to us, beratung at hm.edu, give us a ring, or just go to one of our studies um, pages, hm.edu foreign is the German version and hm.edu study hm is the English version. All right, so this is from my side and now I will have to open the I hope it'll work. Right, servus, hallo, excellent. Are there any courses or subjects that are taught online? Um, not completely, no, not anymore. Um, after the pandemic, really everyone was very, very happy to go back to um, on-site teaching. So you might have the odd lecture still being done online, but it's not possible to do a complete degree online, unfortunately. Um, first year in architecture, 
in the same. Yes, that is one possibility. You can, um, if you study the same subject in Ukraine for at least one year successfully, so it's not enough to just be enrolled, but you really have to do all your exams in that area, then you can apply directly to the same subject, but you will be limited to the same or similar subject. So with um, one year in architecture, you will not be able to apply to mechanical engineering, but to arch architecture, definitely, yes. And um, if you have problems with the times, because you, our application time for architecture is from May to June, um, for architecture, you can still hand in the project documentation and everything later on in the year because um, the, the, your, your grades are not that important for this degree. So um, that, that should be possible. If you can transfer to the second year in our degree or if you have to start again in the first year, I can't tell you. That's up to the exam board of the department. But um, at least you have university entrance for the same um, or similar degree. Right. Um, things in Ukrainian, unfortunately, I can't read, but I think it's the same with one year studying and then you can do without the student colleague. That's what usually works. Um, can a student work part time while studying? Are there any problems with employment contracts? Um, it depends a bit on the visa that you have. If you're here with a student visa, then um, you can work, um, it's 120 full days every year or 240 half days. That comes up to roughly a maximum of 20 hours a week. Um, that's possible from, from the visa and there should be no problems with the employment contracts, um, but you shouldn't do more. And so that's the legal situation that legally you're allowed to do this. Um, but uh, we recommend not actually to work maybe more than 12 hours a week because especially in the first two semesters at least you really will be occupied with studying and um, we we got the experience that uh, studying more than 12 or 15 hours a week is really derogatory for your studies so even if you could um, however the term breaks are really free so in between terms, that's usually six to eight weeks, um, there's nothing you have to do for university and you can work more in those times. But yes, legally, you're allowed to work um, a maximum of 120 days um, every year. Can a student work part-time or studying? Yeah. Can the student visit subject outside main study courses? Um, I'm not quite sure I understood the question. Um, as I said, you have your six modules every semester. And if you do those six modules, you usually are fairly booked. <laughs> um, we have um, a department for general studies where you can do language courses if you want to on top. That's fine. And um, as I said before, you have to do the two elective courses anyway. And you can choose from a broad um, number of subjects here. Um, but more than two will not be regarded towards your degree. So only the two elective courses will be part of your degree. The others you can take if you want to, um, but that's on your own free time and not part of the, your degree. But um, as I said, the whole department for general study is open for you and you can join more courses than the ones you have to own. Right, which... Specialities are most popular among international students. Um, I'm not quite sure I understand that with the specialities. Um, maybe it's with regard to business. Um, I, I can't say, <laughs> but with um, bachelor degree courses, um, our courses in business administration are very popular and in computer science are very popular with international um, degree students, also architecture. Um, and um, yeah, those are the, and um, yeah, and mechatronics. Those would be the, the four that, that are usually very popular with the international degree seekers.
and the specialities in the different departments that I think that would be um, too much. Um, more about the entrance exam for informatic and design. Okay. Um, informatic and design um, has two steps again. The one is that you have to do um, and prepare a homework. Um, with the beginning of the application period in May, the department sets a task that you have to fulfill at home. Um, you have to describe how you would maybe program an app or something else. It's every year something different. So you have to do that by the end of uh, the application time. And then choosing from that, suitable um, students will be invited for an entrance exam, which usually is done online. And again, you have to, it's, it's an interview where you have to talk about your task and why did you solve it the way you did and what did you think about it and so on. And maybe also a little bit about your motivation. So informatic and design is one practical task you have to complete during the application time and then something you have to do during the um the, during one day of the um interview then which exactly it is of course we don't know <laughs> and that's kept a secret every year from the department so life in munich um is one of the most expensive in germany yeah that's true munich is a very attractive city we can say um but of course and it has many high paying jobs but of course that means that um the cost of living is fairly high as well um it's the main part of your money will go towards rent um and that is difficult if you're lucky you can get an apartment uh, or a room in one of the dorms but um You'd have to be very lucky. The rent there is 350, um, all inclusive for a month, 350 euro. But if you have to go to the free market, I'd say it starts more like 500 um, a, a month for a room. That really is quite a lot. And there's no end to the top. So you can pay seven or 800 euro as well. Um, and the rest, you need insurance, um, and insurance will be around 100 a month. And then you have to get your usual telephone and, of course, food. I'd reckon about 200 euro per food every month. And um, for your phone, depending on your contracts. Yeah, so you're there with about 800 or 1,000 euro a month. That's something you would have to calculate. Right. Um, can you please explain in detail how can I get into your university via Studienkolleg? Um, the Studienkolleg for the Universities of Applied Sciences in Bavaria is located in the city of Coburg. Coburg is a small city in the north of Bavaria. If you do this, you have to live there because it's too far from Munich to, to commute every day. And the way this works is that you get your pre-check documentation from UniAssist, where they state that you have an indirect university entrance qualification. And then you can, during the normal application time, so for winter, that's from beginning of May to mid of July, and for summer, it's from mid-November to mid-January, you can apply to them. Um, so it's basically you register for the entrance exam and then they will invite you to an entrance exam. Depending on the degree that you want to take, they will place you in the course for technical, uh, technical subjects or business subjects. And um, if you pass the entrance exam, then you do it for one year. And after the one year, you can apply to any University of Applied Science in all of Bavaria and in all of Germany. But you can't apply to a university. And then you apply. So there's no guarantee if you apply to one of our courses with restricted access that you will get a study place. So especially for business administration and computer science, you need a fairly good grade from your student colleague to get a place, but you can apply anywhere afterwards. Um, so that would be the student colleague in Coburg, um, where you can register for the entrance exam with the pre-check documentation. Um, for those of you who want to attend the Studienkolleg in Munich, um, you have to apply to a university 
we can't do anything in that area. Um, after the after you finish um, your student colleague in Munich, we would accept it as well because it gives you a general university entrance qualification, but we can't register you for it. So all this is also explained on the website I mentioned, hm minus um, uh, study minus hm, or you just get in touch with us if you have more questions about the student colleague. But again, student colleague is one part you do a final exam and afterwards you have to apply to the individual um, institutions where you want to apply it's not directly that with getting into student colleague you're guaranteed a place in um, the university of your choice um, what kind of scholarships are available for students um, it's limited <laughs> i have to say um, it's not that many. Um, we have the Deutschland Stipendium for um, applicants with very good grades or students and some social um, engagement or voluntary work. Um, but of course, you have to apply. And if you get it, there's no guarantee. Um, there's the BAföG, which is the um, a state, it's not a scholarship, but it's a state loan that you can apply for if you're here with a, um, as a refugee, then you can apply for it. Um, so they, they pay you the loan and you have to pay it back afterwards, but it's without interest rates. And um, if you're in time with your studies, if you study very fast, it, it will be less that you have to pay back and you have to pay back according to your income later on. Uh, but that's only um, under certain circumstances. And apart from that, that's not a lot. However, we don't charge any tuition fees. So there's no study fees on the one hand, but on the other hand, there are no scholarships either. Right, um, preparatory courses for specialized terminology. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> um, at the moment we can do, uh, we run workshops for our students who are already enrolled, but um, in, in these areas, but unfortunately not now. So that's up to the um, students to prepare themselves. However, if you go, if you're talking about um, mathematics and engineering, we have a few, um, self-tests online um, where you can test your basics in math if you have the basics and that way of course you can have a look at the terminology but the rest no unfortunately not right so the next I'm a first year student can I apply for medicine no um, uh, as I said before we do not have any um, courses from medicine in our um, degrees why doesn't it show Very slow. No, so um, right. So no, no medicine, um, unfortunately. Then uh, one question is about data science. Yes, we have a degree in data science and uh, scientific computing. Um, it's part of our computer science department and um, you can apply for that. Uh, has restricted access as well, but it's not quite as strict as computer science as we don't have that many applicants for this one. Okay, tell us more in detail what documents an international student needs in order to rent an apartment. That is very... Um, that's varying depending on where you want to rent your apartment. Usually you have to show bank statements showing that you have the income to pay for it. You need a valid passport and um, yeah, and your, um, your enrollment certificate usually if you want to rent as a student. Um, but that's it. The, the main thing is that you can show that you can pay the rent and sometimes they will also ask for a deposit of one or two monthly rents in advance. Please don't pay anything from abroad before you have not seen the place. We've um, unfortunately experienced um, some frauds here that people paid when they were still abroad and when they arrived in Munich, no apartment was there at all. So that's, um, we'd advise not to do that. 
Right, then the next one. What certificates are needed to confirm the language proficiency level? Um, so for German, it's the usual German language certificates at C1. That's um, the test stuff, DSH, Goethe Institute or Telc C1. And we have an overview on our websites. That's for all the bachelor degrees. Um, for some master degrees, you need English. That's the usual TEFL or IELTS. And uh, at the moment, it's still level T1, uh, C1 or DSD2. If you're doing German at your school and finish it with DSD2, it's also recognized. Um, summer language preparation? No, unfortunately not. <laughs> Um, sorry. So I would like to know about student colleague, what documents are required and grades earned in it are taken into account when entering the university. So documents for the student colleague in Coburg, again, student colleague Munich is a different affair. You have to apply to a university for student colleague Coburg. You need the pre-check documentation from UniAssist and um, some CV and your passport copy are one of the usual um, documents and some certificate for German language at level B2. It doesn't have to be a certificate. It can also be um, just a statement of attendance, you know, that you're doing a B2 course at the moment, um, but uh, with less than B2, you shouldn't really apply. Um, and then you can apply through the online system um, at Studienkolleg Coburg, and they will then invite you for the entrance exam. Right, the next. Which university in Germany do you have an exchange program with? I, I don't get the question. <laughs> it's, we don't do exchange within Germany. We, we have quite a few uh, exchange partners outside of Germany, but um, not, not within, not, not for our students. I mean, there's, of course, cooperation with some um, other German uh, universities, especially universities of applied sciences, but uh, not really a student exchange. Um, what professions are most in demand in Germany? Uh, computer science. Um, and computer science and business, so the computational engineering, that, that they are really um, thought after. Anything doing with computer science is going really, really fast. And you can earn the best money in that area as well. Um, apart from that, we also need engineers, um, especially with regard to electrical engineering and regenerative energy, because that's, and electric mobility, that's just um, the topic of the future, because we will have to change things here. We have to get away from fossil fuels, and we need the engineers to do that. So those would be um, the, the really big ones. And on the other hand, we also need um, more graduates from social work, because um, in this area, you know, we, we want to um, supply better um, advice in schools and for families and in general to, um, to support this as well. So also our graduates from social science actually are, are quite in demand. But in general, computer science, <laughs> anything to do with that. Um, does the university have an English program? Not at bachelor level at the moment. There's discussion to open um, our degree in business and engineering for the winter semester in English, but it's not quite through yet. But that would be the only one. Um, the rest of our bachelor degrees are taught in German. Master degrees, we have a few in the business area and also in photonics or micro nanotechnology. Um, but for bachelor, possibly as of next winter semester, um, business and engineering. How much time do you have to find a job after graduation? So with regards to visa and residence permit, um, once you graduate, you can get your visa for job seekers visa. Um, and that gives you one and a half years where you can job anywhere. But after one and a half years, you need to find um, a work that is really related to your um, studies and to your qualification. But um, you have 18 months, one and a half years. <laughs> 